So hello everyone, I'm Molly. I'm a product manager on the IPFS team. Um, just a bit about my background, I've worked in education technology and in general in making knowledge more accessible. So I'm super excited to talk to you all today about what we're thinking about offline first use cases and how we want IPFS to kind of come and address some of these problems. So we all use the internet for many things we rely on every single day. You even get wonderful little internet static here. We use it to talk to our friends, we learn new things, we do our work, tons of different things every day. But the internet isn't actually the same everywhere. And in some places, it really sucks. You, in these zones, centralized applications get super slow and lossy, and they literally cease to function. I know we've all had that immensely frustrating experience of being right across the table from a friend and trying to share a photo or a video or just a website that you think that they should see and having to resort to email or text or your favorite cloud storage device to transfer that content from one device to the device literally right next to it. The internet should not be so brittle and obtuse. It's absurd. To illustrate this point, let's start with three examples. A school, a remote village, and a crowd. This is a photo of Chibiribiri Church of Uganda Primary School. In this photo, they're using solar-powered computers to edit documents and presentations to share with their classmates. Frequently in classrooms, the content that students want to load is mostly duplicate. The individual edits that they're making is almost exclusively locally relevant. It only needs to sync back to the rest of the network asynchronously. There's no reason to send all of the, the edits that individuals are making to the outside network before showing it locally to the peers right next door. In many schools and enterprise settings, in both emerging and more developed markets, the connection to the backbone is pretty constrained and frequently intermittent. This causes slowdowns, stalled lessons, interrupted meetings, when all of that internet access is being routed to external centralized services. Here's a, a set of those many rich, wonderful applications that they might be trying to use in this classroom and yet would all require them to sync all of their edits far off to centralized databases. This is a photo of rural Assam it's in, in Northeast India. And these women are using mobile phones to share design patterns for traditional clothing using the internet and peer-to-peer -peer sharing devices. Um, in many of these remote communities, access to the internet is expensive, sporadic, and when they're sharing content with each other, they need tools that work regardless of their connectivity. There's a number of applications for offline peer-to-peer -peer sharing, things like ShareIt, WeTransfer, Samsung MyFiles, but these solutions don't support more dynamic web applications or more flexible content sharing patterns like point-to-point -point instead of just peer-to-peer. This picture is of the Hong Kong independence protests in 2014, where protesters used fire chat to communicate and coordinate in these large local communities. For communicating, communicating in these extremely dense networks, existing infrastructure really struggles to scale to the local demand, shutting down communication channels and slowing the network speeds for everyone, especially for things like chat and gaming and so local social networks where the content is really more relevant to the people around you, tools like mesh networks can help connect peers and empower them to communicate directly. There's other tools that are being developed for this, but we'd love it to be more dynamic, to be able to utilize these new types of networks more efficiently. These examples may sound pretty extreme, but they aren't edge cases or one-off scenarios. They're how an increasing fraction of the world experiences the internet. In the next five years, over one billion users in Latin America, Africa, and Asia will be coming online with conditions similar to these. It's not abnormal. And for these users, data is still really expensive. It's slow, and their connections are very sporadic, which blocks them from taking full advantage of the world's knowledge and the tools on the internet that all of us know and rely on. So how are we addressing these challenges? And the you know, static. What are we going to do to improve our tools and the fabric they're built on? One of the things that's been coming together is a thought movement called Offline First. 
It's a collection of interested and motivated people trying to push forward solutions to this problem together. They do a number of things to help bring together this community. They have a yearly meetup called Offline Camp. They have a Slack community, meetups, ambassadors, uh, other events that anyone can host as part of that community. They're also doing things like user experience research and developing patterns that work well for the offline first environment, where you, know, you need to think about has data synced to all of the people I'm trying to communicate to? Things that might not be design patterns that you'd think about in our centralized app world. There's also a lot of amazing tools throughout the open source community that are trying to bridge these problems and use cases. There's some we know and love that include Endless OS, which is trying to bring offline first operating systems with pre-cached apps and locally relevant content. There's learning equality that builds tools like Calibri and uh, Khan Academy Lite. And these are learning tools trying to address that offline education scenario that we talked about earlier, trying to help make students and teachers be able to communicate more effectively and use all these rich learning tools to level up. There's many other amazing open source projects. If you know of them, come and talk to us. We really, really want to hear about more of them and work together. So of course, I, I would be remiss if I spent all this time talking about Offline First and I didn't talk about IPFS, which is a project to decentralize the internet and make the world's knowledge stored there more resilient, permanent, and accessible to everyone. Huzzah. Offline's super core to our mission here at IPFS. One of the fundamental pieces of this project is that we make this work for everyone, not just the people with perfect connections in this centralized model. And we're ramping that up a lot more now that we've done a lot of the kind of fundamental underlying infra that will make this feasible. So IPFS is really a level below the sort of applications we've been talking about. It's trying to create a better fabric for the internet. So we don't have to create specialized applications for offline in particular. Everything should just work if you're in a partition or in a low bandwidth, bandwidth network. That sounds crazy, but we should be building a network that, that deals with that and makes that a reality. But how could IPFS even do that? Well, you have projects like IPFS and IPLD that are using content addressing, as David just described, to enable these distributed applications that can be served reliably and securely from any source. Content addressing means that links can reference the closest possible version of a file that someone's looking for, which empowers individuals on the edges of the network to retrieve local content directly from whoever they're close to without making duplicate requests for the same file over and over or having to sync all of their edits to some centralized network and service before it gets to the person right next to them. We also work on a project called libp2p, which enables peer discovery, local content routing, and data transports. This is helping bridge the connection between individuals and these distributed networks. So how might IPFS, IPLD, and libp2p help with some of these? Well, by creating a more flexible and resilient fabric for the internet. For things like the school or enterprise use case, it could help by deduping some of these requests, syncing the edits more locally, and maybe even working with pre-caching some of that content that's you know, in high demand so that you don't have to do these long transfers over centralized tubes and infrastructure. For things like peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, this can work with actually enabling you to get files from the peers around you first off but also for more flexible things like point-to-point -point content where you're routing through a set of other peers in order to get at the content that exists to someone you aren't connected to, but through a chain of others you might be. It can also do things like opportunistic content distribution. This is something that would be super cool where you could imagine walking around a big city just like London and you go from one place where you are connected to another place without as good connection and you're able to then distribute the content that you've cached to that community and kind of hop, bridge and hop these networks in order to share your data. You could even incentivize that with something like data couriers um, being able to, to kind of get a, a kickback for that service you're providing of bringing data to other areas that have you know, lower bandwidth or aren't as able to get access to it. 
for something like the local social use cases, it's really all about communication tools and especially things that avoid the backbone in order to connect people and bring them together. There's things like social networks that can be cached or seeded locally. There's resilient connections, so making sure that it's fault tolerant, even if there's um, a natural disaster or a breakage or an attack of some sort, you're still able to, as a group, continue offering the service and having it be resilient to that. And then, especially for things like gaming locally, it's really important to have very fast connections with each other, and it's silly to route all that content to somewhere far away if you want it to be fast. There's also, of course, the challenges. We're not quite there yet. There's a lot of work that we still have to do before we can meet all these demands. That's things like improving our performance and our efficiency, adding better tooling so that we can do things like local peer discovery and content routing, and of course, mo mobile transports for libp2p. But even more importantly, it's actually the people who are building on top of IPFS that really need to think about these offline first use cases and make things that are extremely intuitive and user friendly so that everyone can take advantage of them for these types of scenarios. IPFS is building us a fabric that can support that, but we need the entire community to build the entire stack so that everyone can take advantage. So what's next? Why am I talking to you now? Well, we're starting a working group inside of IPFS for more people to get involved and to actually think about these issues. First thing on our agenda is doing more research and really need finding, understanding these offline first pain points and also connecting with others. So if you are interested, please get in touch with me. There's actually a piece of paper over on that other side. It's, it's wonderful static cling. Come talk to me during the break. Throw out your ideas about how we're gonna make IPFS better for these sorts of scenarios, how we're gonna, I don't know, solve other challenges that you throw at us. Um, just come share your ideas. We're really looking forward to, to working together on this. So what else can you do to get involved other than that? Well, you can learn more, join the conversation. There's a ton of people who are already talking about this. Get involved, get connected. You can also do things like build on top of IPFS for things like offline use cases. Or you can help us kind of adapt existing open source projects to meet these sorts of needs in like this offline peer-to-peer -peer world of magic. We're just getting started, but we're really excited to have all of you on board. So anyone who's interested, Come meet me over in the corner. I have chocolate. I will feed you chocolate. <laughs> I know, it's worth it. Thank you.